engagement. I mentioned earlier we've had fiscal challenges. We've not been able to uh, maintain a salary that we all want to maintain for our educators. There you're looking at what's happened here since 2008 and 9 when salaries were frozen and when there were increases and or bonuses. And you can see, as many of you already know, that a couple of months ago, and thank you to BFT for, for working with us on that, we were able to settle the highest pay raise in, in quite a number of years. So you all should be congratulated. At the, uh, at the December 8th board meeting, we did approve a very similar pay increase for all of our non bargaining employees, and we are still in negotiations with our 1010 group. But we want to be able to do something like that uh, with those employees as well. More on kind of what I've heard and what I've found. One of the things I've heard is that employee salary and benefits are so horrific in Brevard that employees are leaving in droves, especially to surrounding counties and districts. Well, here's a little bit of data to add to that conversation. We're not where we should be. We're not where we want to be. But the notion that we are the lowest isn't accurate either. The notion that our employees are leaving in droves isn't accurate either. Our attrition rate is actually about 11 per less than 10 percent for teachers, which is under the national average for attrition. So the notion that employee morale is so low, salary and benefits are so low, and we are losing people in droves isn't an accurate statement. However, we're losing some, and if we're losing excellent teachers, the loss of one excellent teacher is one loss too many. We're not at the top of the pay scale when you look at us in comparison to other systems. So improving our employee morale, improving salary and benefits um, has been a priority. We're going to make it an even bigger priority. I'm going to shift the conversation over to finance. Mentioned earlier, last five. Within that, while we've had great phenomenal people working within um, a system that, that at times lacks communication and collaboration, those phenomenal people, you've also been made to do a lot. Oftentimes, expectations for many of our positions in this school system are unreasonable and employees have been spread way too thin. A lot of that has to do with the economic crunch that we are working our way out of right now in that we had to um, cut staff members. Well, the result of that is we now have in every, I can't think of a position in this district or an employee group in this district that doesn't fit what I'm about to say. We have more work to do than we have people to do the work. We have a, I heard someone say amen. This isn't church. I mean, we have members of the clergy up front just in case things get out of hand. But I appreciate the, the vote of confidence on the, on the comment. Um, and there are really only two solutions to this problem. More work than we have people. There are only two solutions. Increase the amount of people to match the current workload or decrease the current workload to match the amount of people we have. Two solutions. I will tell you, increasing the amount of people to match the workload, we don't have that kind of money. We need to right-size the workload for our people. Um, in Desmond Blackburn's opinion. You'll hear me talk about that. You'll hear me talking about uh, reducing workload for all employees, right-sizing, prioritizing. You will hear me as your superintendent for that reason be quite skeptical and even push back on anything that sounds or smells remotely like a new initiative. 